All right, everyone, welcome back. We are uh, <coughs> going to be working on the Marlin 780 today. Today we're going to clean it up some, try to get rid of some of this nasty old spray paint that's on there, get rid of the rust, and uh, we're going to give a shot at <coughs> refinishing it. I'm going to use this Dura, Dura Blue aerosol spray. I've never never used this stuff before, but they claim that it looks like real bluing. Uh, yep, it's like a two-part solution. You break this, you push this plunger in, and it releases the chemicals, and you mix them together and spray it on. So that's what we're going to be up to today. All right, so the first thing we're going to do today of course, after disassembling it as far as we want to go. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to start with cleaning and degreasing. I just have some Birchwood Casey cleaner degreaser, but some alcohol or really anything else to get the, get the oil and grease off of here. It's good. Just want to do that before we use our blue and rust remover so it works a little better. So. All right, now that we got those parts satisfactorily degreased, uh, <clears throat> the next step would just be to rinse them off nice in some cold water. I won't make you come to the sink with me. I'll just be back with the parts when they're rinsed off and dry. All right, the next step is going to try, be trying out this blue and rust remover. Hopefully it takes this paint off. Basically a stripper. All right, once that's applied on there nice and liberally everywhere, then go ahead and let it, let it work for a couple minutes. We'll be right back. All right, it's been a few minutes. I've got some steel wool here that I just ran under the sink for a minute to get it wet. All right, let's let that work for a minute. <laughs> All right, that's about as far as I'm going to go here on these. <clears throat> Got the majority of the, the paint off enough that I'm confident it won't flake. <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of you perfectionists out there are going to want to go a lot, a lot farther than that, but I'm pretty happy with it. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to go rinse these parts off in the water again, and then we'll be back. Time to degrease these things. Again, get all that blue and rust remover off. Time for another cold water rinse. Okay, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> dry these parts out again. Try not to get them dirty, dusty, greasy, any of that <clears throat> before the next step. Just got them about as clean as they're going to get for now.
Okay, I'm just making sure I've got all the gunk and little bits of steel wool and everything out from in between the mag tube and the barrel here. <clears throat> if you were going for perfection, as again, usually we're not, <clears throat> you, would, you would definitely dis disassemble this all the way. Take the mag tube off, take these studs out, <clears throat> take the trigger assembly out, but <clears throat> I'm not too worried about it. We're going to tape it off nice and good. Spray the whole thing. After that, it's gonna look it's gonna look just fine for our uses. All right, now that the parts are clean and dry, we're gonna begin the long, tedious process of taping. We really want to be sure we keep paint or whatever that stuff is, dirt coat, whatever. Uh, keep it from getting inside here, especially where the bolt is or in the barrel or. Even in the magazine tube, it's all, it's all very tight tolerances in there, obviously, so we don't want to mess them up. So we're going to very carefully attempt to tape off all of these areas. You might have to use something like a pencil or a dowel to stick the tape to the inside of the receiver like this. <clears throat> you can see how I've got the back part taped off here. I want to paint this safety lever so I'm going to leave that out. But I have sealed up all these holes and the receiver with tape. Trying to put it inside, make sure nothing gets in there. <clears throat> We're going to use these earplugs. Might tear some pieces off or twist them up real tiny to push them into some of the areas like, like the end of the muzzle or the uh, magazine tube here. <clears throat> Maybe some screw holes like this well twist them up real tight jam them in there tear them up a little if you need to just to plug those holes without trying to have to shove tape inside of there okay I just wrapped wrapped that pencil <clears throat> and tape with the adhesive out and then slid the entire thing up in here till I could get up get up to here where these uh where the little loading gate is in the mag tube <clears throat> and that'll that pencil in there will hold the tape snug up against that so should be easy enough to pull out later and pretty well sealed up Alright, the last thing I'm going to do as far as taping is I'm going to put, <coughs> put the, the two screws right here for the front sight. I'm just going to thread them in because I want them to get painted anyway and that will keep any paint from getting down in these threads. Alright, there's how the bolt looks taped. I'm just trying to get this handle and the knob on the striker back here. I want everything else taped off tight. We need this to slide very smooth. All right, we're really soaking up the fire now. We want it to be nice and warm in here so the paint dries quickly or the dirt coat. That's a brisk January day out there. A nice day, but probably 30 degrees or so, so uh, feeling real lucky to be short sleeves in here. I <laughs> love wood stoves. Alright, you're going to want to get all the parts <coughs> hanging from something, some surface that, they're, that you're not going to be painting. On this one I just hook these through little, little holes here for the trigger guard and the <coughs> front sight or the rear sight. So 
those will just be hanging like that. I used tape just to tape onto the bolt here, and this is wrapped around the trachea. So uh, they're all free hanging and uh, should be about ready to paint. All right, we're about ready to <clears throat> get to the the coating, stir coat stuff here. <clears throat> So DuraBlue by DuraCoat, it's supposed to be an aerosol coating, I don't know if it's ceramic or what, you can look up DuraCoat. <clears throat> Basically it's a two part thing, there's a catalyst it says in the bottom that you're going to press this plunger and release it into the top. And once they mix together it'll make a, a coating that'll dry rock hard, it says it takes three to four weeks to cure totally but uh, just overnight to be able to handle it. So we're going to do several coats, um, starting really, really light. <clears throat> and, it, and it wants us to do the last coat as a very heavy, wet coat to make it appear glossy when it dries. So let's get this thing shaken up <clears throat> and then mix the two parts together, shake it some more, and see how it turns out. It says to remove this red button from the top of the cap. And we're going to place this over this nub on the bottom here. Now <coughs> we're going to put this cap back on. <coughs> and uh, flip it over on a hard surface and press this down <coughs> to release the catalyst into the rest of the mixture. <clears throat> and then we're going to shake for three more minutes. So uh, here we go. Moment of truth, I guess. All right, we've released the catalyst. Let's get to shaking. We are officially shaken. <clears throat> We're going to apply uh, apparently three to ten coats. That's some good guidance right there. Uh, thin even passes. So yeah, we'll just get started with that. The only one that's different is the last coat. So we're going to be waiting 10 to 15 minutes in between each coat. Plenty of time to get some other shit done in the shop. Maybe drink some hams. All right, a little fumey. Bust, bust the door open here. See that nice paint waft. It's all right, we'll just get that out of here and close her back up so it's still nice and warm. Stove's raging. <clears throat> Let this first coat dry for a while. While we're waiting for that paint to dry, or dur coat, whatever, I'm gonna do some uh, linseed oil on the stock again. One more coat, why not? Once I have it really, really good and coated, you can see how, you can 
see how shiny it is? It's saturated. <clears throat> I like to get a a dry rag, a clean one, and uh, really, really polish that in there. The longer, the longer you buff it and rub it, <clears throat> and the, and the harder you press that oil in there, and the more heat and friction, the nicer, or shinier, or darker the wood will get. That's what really. I mean, linseed oil is the best, but it's that it's that elbow grease that really makes it look good. Now remember, don't leave oily rags laying around. Spontaneous combustion and what other fucking some such science? Whoops, sorry for cussing. Spontaneously combust that. Holy. So, I don't know, right now it looks extra blue, almost artificial blue. We'll see. I think it'll look cool either way. Let's find out. Let's do another coat. All right, we're mid mid venting the fumes out there, and uh, I hear something in the woods. Let's go check it out. All right, not the best shot. <clears throat> We're heading back to the shop, but probably saw <clears throat> some wild turkeys roosting up in the trees. They sleep way up in the tops. It's pretty cool. All right, we'll see you back in the shop. Let's keep painting. Let's do another round. <laughs> All right, folks, tragedy strikes. I've got some, uh, some tiny little wood chips somehow stuck to this. Not happy about it. Trying to remove them seems to be making it worse. I think we're just going to have to deal with that. Spray paint over them. Bummer. All right. We're going to do one last coat on these things. They still look uh, navy blue. I'm, I'm kind of scared it's going to look cheesy as hell. <clears throat> but we're going to do the last coat. The last coat's different. The last coat should be a full wet coat and even heavier than the previous coats to create a smooth and glossy appearance. Coats will not appear uniform, or even at first, but will level out as each coat sets up. Alright, I don't know. I feel like we're getting towards the end of the can already, I don't know. I'm just going to make this the last one. 
so I gotta go nice and heavy and wet I guess without causing too many drips I'm not too sure about this <laughs> All right, I think we're about done for the night here. We did some nice work. Last few coats on the stock. I guess last one coat and some polishing. Paid off, looks nice. Uh -uh. We've got our parts. We've got our parts drying here. Depending on the lighting, they look halfway acceptable. Still pretty blue. We got the fire rolling. Big old dog on there. Try to keep these babies warm. Hopefully they'll dry nice. We will uh <coughs> we will check back tomorrow. Let's see how it works. Looks like the parts are dry. Or dry enough to handle at least. They look okay. I don't know how well you can see that there. It's very blue. It's very blue. I'm not going to bother buying a different can of this stuff. It's $40. It's too much. Um, we'll just call it good. But if I were to do this again, I would definitely get the blue black, not the blue. So let's get the tape off this thing, put it back together. <laughs> All right, well, it came out much bluer than I was expecting. Kind of hard to pick it up. But it looks good. The finish came out nice. It's smooth. It's shiny. Other than where I screwed up right here, got some wood on the paint. It looks good. But I definitely would not get the blue color again. It is far too blue. It looks it looks pretty cheesy in my opinion. <clears throat> oh well, what can you do? Stock came out nice. It's shiny. It's much better than it was.